Can we make our own battery testers? Let's begin. For quite some time, I've been thinking of making my own cell testing discharge testing device where I could just put the batteries and discharge them. One of the reasons I want to do that is that most of the testers like Litocala, AquiPower, and others, when you put a battery, they charge the battery, then discharge, then charge again. And for me, that's a waste of time because if you charging batteries is easy, but discharging takes time, you know, and I was thinking maybe I could just make a device so I could just discharge them and record the capacity in there. So this video is uh, the results of that test. So hopefully you guys like it. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Who knows? Maybe I get to build a 200 or 400 cells capacity discharge facility or whatever. Anyway, enjoy. So this is a small test that I'm running um, right now. I'm recording the milliamps on one battery that I have here, which is this one. This battery was one of those cells that the Litocala had a capacity of close to 400 and something milliamps. And this is just a technically a shunt made out of resistors with a, a MOSFET and an Arduino. So technically, I'm going to be discharging the battery all the way down to 2.95 and it's going to cut off. Uh, as soon as it hits that voltage, it's going to cut the testing and it's going to give me the recording. So about 15 minutes passed since I checked the voltage and the temperature and a total amount roughly of 35 minutes since I started the testing. As you can see, voltage has gone down from 3.7 to 3.6. Uh, the constant current it remains at 0.52 and that's the amount of milliamp that we have recorded so far. Regarding temperature, the cell uh, is still pretty cold. I don't see any fluctuation. Maybe the, like the highest that I saw it was 79. When it comes to the resistors, uh, they do got a little bit warmer but that's just 80 and the MOSFET is still pretty cold. So this is one of the main reasons this battery showed me that it was already done. There was nothing going on and this tester said that it finished but it just had zero milliamps recorded. I'm going to show part of the Spanish video so you can see what it's going on but this battery right now I'm recharging it making sure it's fully charged before I put it through the Arduino and I'm going to let the Arduino run and do the testing and see what capacity this battery supposedly had. So this is why I'm running this test. Anyway I'm going to fully charge both of the batteries and then I'm going to put them through the Arduino tester and see what is going on. And let me just show you the reason I, I haven't been able to finish up the series on my installation is that I'm still going through a bunch of batteries that I have. Over here I have roughly 5 kilowatt. It's taking a lot of time to just process them so but I'm almost there. Anyway I'm going to continue with the test and let me just recharge those and put them through the Arduino. So it's been about an hour since my last test or recording and about three hours since I started doing the test. The overall voltage under load, it's still uh, pretty good. The amps, they're still pretty solid at 0.4, but look at the milliamps we recorded for the three hours. Everything seems to be working. Yes, I do have to double check my code to make sure that everything's pretty good and decent. But assuming that the code is okay, that everything is working, like I'm amazed how we managed to read a about three times or more the size of what Lito Kala said that it was not, you know, possible. Regarding the temperature, this battery is technically just cold. That's room temperature. The resistors, they do got, get a little bit warm. I've seen them over 100, probably 101, but that's about it. And the MOSFET is still pretty cool. So the battery finish, the Arduino is finished. As you can see right here, the now the voltage on the battery is about 3.38. I'm amazed about the amount of energy that battery had based on the assumption that everything is working the Litocala discarded this battery and let me just show you something i don't know if i can remove it 
this battery is pretty old one of the first battery i ever got and that was last year last year when i was testing this i had to discard this battery i'm pretty amazed about the amount of energy this Arduino is saying that this battery has. So I'm gonna recharge this battery and I'm gonna put it again through the test over the Litokala and see if we can actually mix and match and maybe discard that it was a misreading, okay? So there you go, guys. I hope you liked the video and hopefully some of you get interested in building your own battery tester device. Um, my whole goal, as you saw, I have many batteries that, are, that, that I need to cycle them to make sure that what I'm putting on my power wall, it's going to work and it's gonna have the capacity that I need for my home. And also the battery that you saw, it's five kilowatt hours, roughly more or less, because I'm using 1800 cells all the way up to 2300 but I still need that same amount to be cycled. We're talking around 700 cells. If I do that with the current setup that I have, it's gonna take me a month to cycle them. By having my own device where I could put 100 cells, 200 cells per day, that's the main goal, being able to have an Arduino that can read 200 cells at a time. I hope you guys like it. As a reminder, we have uh, battery kits available. They're already here, you don't have to wait. So if you order today, they're gonna be out on the mail tomorrow. Also, we are going to start producing this, the new spacer. We have all the materials that I need. We're going to start making this. So be on the lookout for that announcement. Uh, I know the price for the battery kit is going to change. So if you want to get a great deal, just get it right now because then you're going to end up paying a little bit more maybe because this space is going to be a little bit more expensive than just using PVC. So just wanted to let you know that. And the question everybody's asking, where's the BMS? Well, here's one of the modules that I'm working in. This is the module that I'm going to be using and basing the server and everything else. And this... This is the other device that is gonna be reading the individual package voltages. So with this, uh, we get to try to keep our cells pretty balanced. So hope you guys like it. I'm sorry that I haven't been able to upload many videos like before, but I'm just one person. I'm working a lot, uh, fulfilling orders, trying to keep the lights here. I'm just by myself, as you know, I don't have an army. I don't even have people that collaborate with me. So anyway, that is why it's been difficult for me to keep up with the video so hopefully that's about to change but in the meantime just remember jesus christ love you god bless you and i'll see you in the next time bye